I came across this article today on bounding into comics. And I've talked a little bit about Rings of Power. Uh, I watched the whole season. Spoiler alert. If you haven't watched it, there will be spoilers in here. Geronimo, that's not Kurt Cobain. <laughs> that's um, that's that's Kurt uh, Kurt Salrain right there. Yeah, there will be spoilers in this. If you haven't seen this already, uh, tough titties. Um, that's Sauron there. Uh, the the whole point is they're trying to tell a surprising story. They want to they want to surprise you they want to shock you they want to subvert your expectations uh and uh to do that they have to essentially ignore any and all fan feedback and then sort of gaslight and say oh no no, no we did do fan feedback and uh and then not really do it at all so here we go amazon studio executives admit the company is still being intentionally deaf about the fan feedback for Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. Who is, is this guy here? Uh, Vernon Sanders. He's uh, he's head of global television. We set up now. Here we go. So there's two parts of this story that's funny. So we set up our own study with thousands of people, among them thousands of Lord of the Ring fans, to really have a conversation with, with them as each episode dropped to understand how they were reacting. We also knew... There were some fans who had issues or didn't feel like this was the way they were expecting were expecting or done in the way they expected. Okay. And that's natural. I think whenever you take something that's so beloved, you're going to have probably a strong reaction for and some people who just aren't on board. Well, especially if it's if they are actual fans, which it turns out a lot of them weren't. Uh, and you just completely ignore everything that they know about the adaptation you're doing, then yeah. There's going to be some people who have some issues with it. I know I hark on about this like a broken friggin' record, okay? Uh, but I implore you, watch the Arcane documentary on the making of and just soak in the complete 180-degree opposite approach that they had to adapting uh, the source material to the TV show than what is happening here and with uh, other shows that are similar similarly failing um the you know <laughs> i know mo i'm sorry but i'm just like the uh, you know arcane gets all the glory and the awards and uh people like me just bang on about it non-stop because they were so the whole time they will we've got to put the fans first we don't want to disappoint the hardcore fans of the show. And then you take Rings of Power and many other Marvel stuff that we were talking about the other day. <laughs> Bancroft with his arcane tinted glasses. <laughs> that, you know, in the MCU, they're like, oh, we didn't even want people who are fans of the comics or even have read the comics. We don't want that for writers. You, you know, like, the, any, any, okay, anyway, all right. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, they're going to continue to struggle because what's the even, what is the point? What is the point? And I say this every single time. What's the point of making an adaptation if you're not going to adapt the thing and you're just going to create your own new thing and say, it's surprising. It's, it's, there's twists and turns. And uh, why try and cater to millions of fans that are already established? I know, right? Why? Why? That just seems, seems crazy. What a, what a silly idea. You're right, Jeremy. Uh, Stephen Sun, competency is greater than diversity <laughs> Shitty. i like that i haven't heard that one before uh shadow punk says hail tolkien down with rings of power the point is to try and squeeze out a few more pennies but it doesn't work they lost money on this or they're losing money okay so he didn't go into the details but he says he claims to have brought in these lord of the rings super fans to a special screening right However, the super fans didn't seem to be at all that interested in Lord of the Rings when they cut a number of promotional videos attempting to promote the show. Rather, they put the focus on, can you guess? Identity politics. Yay. One super fan st stated when she, when asked to describe the trailer, I also want to say representative because we're getting like, uh, you're going to say like, I also want to say like representative because we're like, we're getting like, mod diversity with the series 
uh, like we're seeing our first black elf. We're seeing our first female dwarf. I'm very looking forward. I'm very forward. Is <laughs> is that what the person said? I'm very, I'm very looking forward to looking at that. <laughs> I mean, okay. All right. All right. Uh, you want more? I don't know. Oh, my God. Yeah, the pennies are being squeezed into shite. <laughs> Uh, okay, and uh, so these are the super fans. Uh, one of them later admitted to not even watching the show. That was called out by Ryan Kennel, who discovered that uh, Chanel Williams, one of the so-called super fans, did a video where she revealed she hadn't even watched the show. She claimed she was going to binge watch it. Oh, there you go, Jeremy. She revealed she was watching House of the Dragon weekly, <laughs> which is a Lord of the Rings super fan, all right? uh evolution one says no one cares about her being the first black elf i know right it is very cringy i oh, i just find this so funny they're never going to learn they're never going to change yeah i mean it just goes on to basically say uh one of the challenges for the show when you're adapting something is to tell a story that people are excited to see but sometimes find ways to surprise them i would wager that most people watching this show have not read the Silmarillion or any of the other, um, uh, you know, sort of expanded uh, outside of Lord of the Rings. I mean, mo most, of the, let's face it, most of the fans of Lord of the Rings haven't even read Lord of the Rings. So uh, it was going to be a surprise anyway. They could have stuck perfectly to the books. It would have been a surprise anyway. So that is just a, a BS excuse. Uh, okay, and here we're getting into Sauron. Sauron, I would argue, the greatest villain of all time. Mm, maybe. Uh, how do you get to know that? How do you get to know that person? How do you get to understand how they work? What are the layers there? I think the audience is now of an insight whether he fooled them or whether he knew the entire blah blah blah. Like, let's they have an issue with villains, they have an issue with villains. I don't know why. Uh, Sauron didn't need changing he didn't need modernizing he didn't need soyifying uh here's the here's the author here's the writer of this article's opinion except the show butchers the character of sauron the they don't show his actual fall uh his chance at repentance penance and uh obedience his rejection of it and his complete turning into a reincarnation of evil tolkien laid out sauron's character arc in letter 131 uh, writing in the Silmarillion and Tales of the First Age, Sauron was a being of Valinor. All right, we're getting into we're getting into the deep deep lore here. <laughs> this is uh, uh yeah the black yeah that honor goes to Vader. I agree. Yeah, I mean I, I like Sauron enough. I mean he's he's all right, but I mean in Lord of the Rings you don't even see him. I don't know how he could be the greatest villain of all time. I I would I might actually to to me I like Moriarty. Um, I just like that character, uh, so much, but, uh, you know, Vader's, uh, you know, in the, in the grander culture, you know, I think Vader's probably more popular. Soy run <laughs> says Jeremy, how's your father says, I want to enter the fabled land of vaginal. <laughs> um okay so the, the basically the writer is showing how the show completely ignored the source material of who sauron was to write their own sauron here he is it's not this guy it's uh this guy here having a drink come and have a drink with duncan because duncan's your mate um rings of power completely casts this wildly uh, interesting and intriguing story in the trash because they wanted to quote unquote surprise people However, they didn't want to just surprise people. They fell into the will of Sauron themselves and thought they could tell a better story than Tolkien. That's a good point. The hubris, the lack of humility, the need that these writers have to tell their own, put themselves into these classic stories. We saw that with Batman, you know, like, who was that guy? Was it Tom Taylor or Tom King? He was like, oh, we got to, you got to put yourself into the Batman character. No. And then so, I think it was, it was either Frank Miller or Alan Moore or someone called him out and said, no, no one wants to read about you 
laughing as Batman. They want to read about actual Batman. Checkpoint says, yeah, now Saren is a good boy. He he was a good boy in this show, actually. He was... <laughs> This is the like I don't know if you if you watch the show. In this show, Sauron is a good boy who wants to do good, but he's actually turned to evil, forced into evil by Galadriel, who is the true villain of the whole series. And I think that was 100. I'm pretty sure, 90 percent sure, that's the intent of the showrunners. Jeremy says Sauron is practically the protagonist in this. He kind of is. Yeah, it's just, he's the sympathetic one. Uh, but yeah, the point stands uh, that they're not listening. Even though they really underperformed in the ratings on this show, and I think the ratings is how they justify spending the amount of money that they spend on these things at Amazon. Uh, yeah, they're not going to listen. Because that's just that's just a small minority of um, loudmouths on the internet who are telling them that uh, you know you completely disrespected and disregarded the source material, and that's why your show is a laughing stock. Um, they're going to they're going to go full steam ahead. Was it was it this show? Was it Lord of the? Yeah, it was Lord of the Rings. Yeah, the the future of this is female. Remember, they've got the all the they've uh, fired the two male directors and brought in two female directors. So, I mean, strap in. It's going to be a wild, wild ride.